I'm Connie Alexander. The classical Pasifino is one of the fastest growing breeds of horses in the world today. We're here in Perry, Georgia at the 28th annual Pasifina National Grand Championship. There are horses here today from all over the country and some from other countries in the world. Before we get to the show, let's talk about some of the characteristics of this breed and then we'll talk to some of the people who know and love these horses. The Moorish occupation of Spain and early European history brought together the ancestors of the modern Pasifino. This elegant, smooth-gated horse is the result of a combination of breeds. The blending of the Moorish barb and native European stock produced the Spanish Jeanette. This horse had an extremely smooth and even gait. The Jeanette was then bred to the Andalusian, resulting in a horse that was hardy, smooth-gated, and retained the elegant presence of the Andalusian. These horses were transported to the Americas by the Spanish explorers, including Christopher Columbus. The unique gait of the Pasifino has been passed down through generations and is the hallmark characteristic of this classic breed. There are no artificial aids or devices used to train Pasifino horses to produce their trademark gait. The Paso is born with a natural lateral four-beat gait. This lateral gait eliminates much of the up and down movement a rider experiences in the diagonal gaits of other breeds. As a result, the rider experiences an incredibly smooth and even ride. Each foot touches the ground independently of the others, providing an even cadence. This can best be heard in the silence of a show ring as a paso crosses the phenol board and the one, two, three, four beat is signaled throughout the arena. You can see the brio, or fire, in the horse's step. This four-beat gait occurs in three different speeds. The classic fino, the paso corto, which is a speed similar to a trot, and the paso largo. Don't let the attention given the unique gait of this horse fool you. The paso fino has more to offer than a smooth ride. This horse ranges in size from 13 to 15 hands high. The profile is generally straight and the neck is arched. The Paso is moderate in length and has a strong muscled back. The legs are fine bone and the mane and tail full. They can be found in every equine color and may be solid or have white markings. Because of its comfort ride, calm disposition, and natural agility, this horse has become a favorite for multiple riding disciplines. Pasofinos are intelligent, spirited horses that are trained in both the English and Western discipline. They also excel in pleasure and trail riding. The Paso adapts to any climate and is as capable of doing long hours of ranch work as it is of performing dressage. The Paso enjoys people and can be a wonderful companion animal. This classic, elegant, hardworking horse could find a place in the barn and the heart of any horse lover. Mr. Goldman, so nice of you to meet with us today. Thank you, Connie. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let me ask you, you um, own La Tierra Pasifinos. Yes, with my wife, Betty. Pasifino is a very classical, special breed. Um, could you tell us a little bit about their, their walk? Well, uh, the gated horse is, uh, is a different horse. There are about 10 different gated breeds. The Pasifino is one of, the, one of those. The trail action is called a pleasure gate. Pleasure okay. gate. And uh, if you're looking at it, visibly with your eye. Uh -huh. What you'll see is uh, the front uh, two feet uh, will actually kind of go out like that. Right. And the horse gets very extended. And this horse can walk at 25 miles an hour. Oh my, okay? oh my. I mean, it can outwalk a galloping horse. Horse, okay? right. If you really want to engage it at that level. Right. All right. Uh, now, the second gate that's very popular is called a performance gate. Right. Then you ask it to Largo, and that's when you let it out. And when you see a really good performance horse, a pleasure horse Largo, you go, oh my God. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful to watch. You then the, the gate that is uh, made the Pasofino, the Pasofino, is right. called the Fino gate. Okay. And then the Fino gate, which is really the most complex gate, uh, they only ask them to Fino walk or okay. Fino, which okay. is, and the Fino gate, you'll see their feet go down like this, and you'll say, well, gee, that looks very easy. Yeah. But it's not. It's, it's actually the, the it's, it's extraordinarily difficult for the horse to keep their concentration and do that and do, you know because you're asking the horse to totally collect 
engage from the rear and be consistent in a you know in a four beat lateral gait. Right. So, so they either do that in the Fino or they do that in a walk. That's just two two gait. Would you think that the Pasafino would be a good first time horse for someone who who was just getting into the sport? Yeah, I actually I think it would be outstanding on two levels. I think it would be outstanding for young kids because they tend to be very sweet animals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have a lot of energy, uh -huh. but they're also uh -huh. very sweet, and I think it's very good for young for young kids. But it's particularly good for people who have had bad experiences with other horses, other horses. or people who are, let's say, above 35, which I unfortunately am right. one of those. <laughs> uh, and because it's it's a phenomenal horse for someone who's got a bad back. That's what I was going to say. Oh, it just phenomenal. looks so smooth. It's, it is a horse that you can go on a trail ride for four hours, and you come back and you actually refresh. And suffer from it. You mentioned trail rides. Do, can you tell us a little bit about what the Pasofino was originally bred for? Well, it's interesting. The Pasofino was the first horse in North America. Oh, really? Columbus brought the horse over in his second voyage. I didn't know that. That's correct. Excellent. So it's the oldest horse in the United in States. In the United States. In, in North America. Right, right. And uh, it's a horse that really uh, has gotten popular, repopularized re in the 20th century first in Latin America right. and in the last 30 years here in the United States. And here in the United States, we've actually become the country of the world for Paso, for Paso Finos. But Europe is also getting very interested in this horse. Right. Uh, right. It's not a huge horse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It appeals to women because it's not a huge horse. It's a small it appeals, appeals to children. It's about 14 and a half to 15 hands. Right. Right. Um, so it, which is a lot, plenty of horse. It's but plenty, it's it's just, plenty of horse, but it's, it, but it's, not, it's not so imposing. Right. That, in, that it's intimidating. Right, right. It's a beautiful animal. We have really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you, Mr. Goldman. At 18, Sally Jo Creel juggles college, work, horses, and a rigorous show schedule. She talked with us about the excitement and rewards that go along with the life she enjoys. Sally Jo, thank you so much for being with us here Hi. today. I just saw you in the ring. You did a wonderful job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell me, how long have you actually been showing? Um, I've been showing since I was six years old. Since you were six years old? Yep. Oh my goodness. Have you always ridden the Pasifinos? Um, No, actually I've done hacky ponies and quarter horses. Right. And I still do them. And you still do those, but you specifically are right now riding the Pasifinos. Right. What did it feel like in there in the ring? Um, it's an adrenaline, adrenaline rush. Is it? It's very, but I look forward to that. It's yeah. almost like when you're at the peak of a roller coaster. Right. And you right. wait for that and it's an exciting feeling and yeah. I enjoy it. And that's what keeps you going back time after right. time. Right. Oh, yes. I understand this is your last show in, in Sub Junior, which means under in 18 junior. and under in, yep. in Junior. So in junior. Um, how does that feel to be moving from that category into uh, kind of a different world? It's almost like my actual high school graduation. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't really know how, how, how ready I am for the that. change. Yeah. but. I, you're I'm right. welcoming it. So. I was going to say, from, from what I saw in the ring, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. I understand that you ride not only your horses, but you actually show other people's horses because they, they truly appreciate your talent. Yeah. Well, I, I know you hate to say that, I to but I understand that. Way. that. Yeah. yeah. So you, so you, do, uh, you do actually ride for other, for other individuals. Yeah. 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 Do you feel different when you, when you get on a horse? Do you, how much pre preparation time do you spend with a horse before you show it? Before I show it? Yeah. Sometimes it can be years. Oh, seriously? And oh. other times it can be a day. <laughs> a day, okay. So it, re it, re it requires a commitment either way. Right, and if a trainer trained it that I am comfortable with and I've worked with before, it's a lot easier for me to get on that horse and know how the horse is gonna respond to me riding it. Uh, I see. Sounds like, to me, this takes up a lot of your time. Oh well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you're not riding horses? What kind of um, things do you enjoy? Well, I go to college. Uh huh. Um, I I work at a skating rink. Ah. And you work and go to college and and yeah, show horses. Yes. yes. I'm in a ladies mounted drill team. Oh my. Yeah. Um, what, how, when do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have time for that. <laughs> What's your major in school? What um, are you business in technology. In? Business technology. Well, let me ask you this, Sally Jo. There's a lot of uh, young people out there who may be watching this. Would you recommend horses in general to young people? Absolutely. It's a very healthy thing to choose. It takes up time where people could be doing something else could that may not be as problems. constructive right. or even... And it makes you feel good. Right. It really does. Right. What's it like to work with horses? What's it like? It's very rewarding. Is it? Very. Yeah. 
you, you, you actually develop personal one on oh, one relationship with definitely. these animals. Can you tell the difference in the performance with a horse you've spent a lot of time with versus one that maybe you just you know worked with for a day? Yeah, it's the confidence thing. You feel more confident on a horse that you've that worked with for a while. And they, and they probably feel more confident. I, of course, I'm speaking for a horse now, but I can only assume that they feel they oh, feel more confident definitely. with you. Sai Joe, thank you so much for thank talking you. with us, and uh, we wish you good luck in the as you move on. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. Bye. Georgia State veterinarian Dr. Lee Myers talked with us about the West Nile virus. This virus causes an encephalitis, or what's commonly called inflammation of the brain. She discussed with us the possible serious consequences of this virus. Yes, West Nile virus is a flavy virus, very similar uh, to an encephalitis that horse owners commonly know, which is Eastern equine encephalomyelitis and Western equine encephalomyelitis. Horse owners uh, typically vaccinate against Eastern and Western, but this West Nile virus is a foreign animal disease that has come into the U.S. So it's a new uh, encephalitis that horse owners are having to deal with. From what we're told, uh, the general symptoms or clinical signs of West Nile, uh, the general signs might not be that much different than any other neurological disease. They can be become apprehensive, uh, listless, lethargic, off feed, have fever and that's not that much different than a lot of other diseases. However, there are a few clinical signs that seem to be particular for West Nile. Some of those are paralysis of the, of the lip, a shaking head, um, paresis or paralysis of the, the rear end, actually uh, becoming para paralyzed and going down. Um, if the virus um, is of high enough magnitude and is pathogenic in the animal, you might just find uh, the animal acutely dead. Unfortunately, there's no specific antiviral agent that's available to treat any of those infectious uh, encephalitides. So unfortunately, we're left with simply supportive treatment. Uh, that is IV fluids, uh, analgesics, um, medications to keep the fever down, trying to keep appetite up, uh, trying to keep the animal comfortable if they are paralyzed. Just support the animal until hopefully they can recover on their own and, and get rid of the virus on their own. Uh, but it is important to know that as a state veterinarian, we are aware, we're cognizant, we're monitoring uh, the mosquito pools in our state. We're monitoring uh, the bird, wild bird population. Our diagnostic laboratories are cognizant and aware of how to diagnose it in these birds, and they serve as very good sentinel animals. Um, what we're also trying to do is alert our equine practitioners as to the clinical signs and how to submit tissues if they suspect a West Nile virus case, and also educate our horse owners to be aware that if they see um, a lot of dead crows uh, on their farm because this virus has a propensity uh, for crows and blue jays, to let us know and to submit samples in so we can have a very good surveillance and monitoring system in place to be alert in, in, in the event we do have a case. The main protection that horse owners can do now is simply to prevent uh, mosquito infestation. Uh, realizing again this is transmitted through infected mosquitoes who have fed on infected birds, the best protection is to prevent mosquito breeding areas around the farm. So that means trying to alleviate stagnant pools of water where mosquitoes typically breed, trying to use um, quality insect control in the barn. Um, those factors are probably going to do more than anything to try to prevent uh, infection. Unfortunately, there's no vaccine available yet uh, for West Nile, even though scientists are feverishly working in, in the research labs trying to uh, develop an effective and safe vaccine. Did you know the Spanish conquistadors reintroduced the horse to the Americas in the early 1500s? Prior to that, horses had vanished from the Americas during the Ice Age thousands of years ago. Chino, a grand champion Pasifino, 
Florida have formed a strong partnership. After spending years together winning championships, they have turned their talents to the dance floor. You won't believe this one, a beautiful dancing black stallion. Mr. Morales, nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. <laughs> and this is Chino. This is Chino, yes. Tell me a little bit about Chino. What type, what kind of horse is Chino? Uh, Chino del Bate is uh, one of these horses that were that have been given the gift to uh, to dance and perform and, and entertain people, and this is what he does best. This uh, is what he does best. Yes. And he is Pasafino. He's a Pasafino. Pasafino. And he's also a Bellaforma horse. He's been he's a grand champion for six years in a row oh my. in the Bellaforma class. I see. So, so he's, uh, he's a real star. He's a real star. He's a star. real star. Yeah. And how old is Chino? And Chino is 11 years old now. Okay. And, and he's been dancing with you for how long? For nine years, yeah. For nine, nine years. Yes. Wow. Did you ride him during his championship days? Uh, yes, I was the one that he was uh, the one who taught him huh. to yeah, train him and show him how to dance and show him in the ring and yeah. how to perform in, in his competition. All right. So you have a real real kind of bond here with Chino. Yes, yeah. Chino and I were bonded together by uh, by the higher power, uh -huh. God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a, one of those horses, one in a million, and uh, uh, he was able to accept everything that I was willing to right. Him. Right. To the gift of the Lord that I can handle. So you actually trained him from, from the ground up? Yes, yeah. that is correct. I got him since he was 12 months old. 12 months old, oh my goodness. And he does he enjoy the crowd? Do you think he enjoys the... the, the uh... Yes, uh, definitely. He uh, When he's uh, performing, he feels that he is doing something for the, He's the equine showman. world. Right. That, that the horses right. are beautiful and, exactly. and, and tells you, here I am. And here I am. Yes. And watch me. And yes. Absolutely. Hi, pretty. Hi, pretty. He's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Connie. I All appreciate right. your comment. You know, you hear that? Yeah. You're gorgeous. Yeah. J.M. Yancey of Flowery Branch, Georgia, handcrafts custom fitted saddles. This time honored craft requires skill, experience, and patience. We asked JM, why would a custom fitted saddle be necessary? A lot of problems are caused by bad saddle fit. A horse that won't uh, move out when you mount up, he wants to stay put, he doesn't want to move. It may be an indication that he's under some kind of pain. There's all kinds of stress uh, manifestations that, will, that's, that some horses will give an indication that, that something's wrong. So your horse is going to do something, probably, to indicate that, that he doesn't like it. If you're cinching up your saddle and he reaches around and tries to bite at you, that's telling you that, the, that probably the saddle tree is too narrow, you're pulling down the cinch, and, and it's causing him some sharp pain. Uh, the object of saddle fitting is that basically the saddle tree or, or the English saddle, the padding and, and, and underneath, conforms to the shape of the horse's back properly and yet allows enough room for him to move freely so it's not causing him a problem. There's all kinds of manifestations, even false lameness that's caused by a saddle putting direct pressure on the withers that go even down through the scapula or the shoulder blade of the horse, even down to the knees, and can cause them to, to somewhat stumble along. So there's all kinds of indications, things you can look for. A horse that's constantly looking back on the trail or turning sideways on the trail, you're having problems getting straight on the trail. Ringing of the tail. Sometimes they'll ring their, their tail like they're fretting or just upset. A lot of indications. It's learning how to fit the saddle or going to somebody who can do it for you. That's what you want to look for. A couple of methods. There's the wire method where you bend three different wires at three different positions over your horse's back. One at the withers, one mid-back, and one back at the loins. Lay that on a piece of poster board. Draw the inside of those wires. Cut it out with a pair of scissors. You can send that to the saddle maker or you can take it with you to a local saddle shop and pick up a saddle and flip it upside down and see if those forms fit in its proper space. One of the things we do in our shop is we make a plaster cast of the horse's back and that way there's no mistake. We go to the horse or they bring the horse to us, we make the plaster casting and then we take this to the tree maker. And that way we know for sure that we've got a good fit. Not all saddle makers will do this. If you will do it or if you need this material you can get it from medical supplies, do it yourself Fill it with some kind of uh, this new foam that they use to insulate houses with and, and, and uh, fill the chinks in the, where, the, where the coal blows in. Uh, one product, uh, I could give you a product name, but there's, there's different varieties out there. Just ask at your local home supply store. Spray that in and it'll make it solid and you got a good form that you can send to a saddle maker anywhere in the country, put it in a box and send it away and you've got a good form to go by. There shouldn't be any room for mistake there. So. 
that's how you get a custom saddle. First, locate the saddle maker. Ask a lot of important questions like how does he fit your saddle. Then consider the price and what you can stand. Also consider what you're going to use the horse and saddle for. Pat Pirelli is a gifted trainer and communicator. He has given thousands of clinics over the last 11 years and operates an international study center at his ranch in Colorado. He talked with us about natural horsemanship. Hello, Pat. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your, your, your philosophy. Of, of, uh, it's obviously that you have a passion for horses. How did you develop that? I mean, where did that come from? The passion for horses? Yeah, the passion for horses. Oh, I think I was born with the passion for horses, you know. So I think, you did grow up with horses? Yes. You know, the, the thing is, I think like a bird dog, uh, every bird dog was a puppy at one time in his life. And what happens is, when he was a little puppy, birds didn't mean nothing to him, chickens didn't mean anything to him. One day, a bird dog puppy just goes along and goes, and he looks at their hand and they go, why'd I do that? I think that's what happens to most people that really have a passion for horses. One day, it just wakes, it just something wakes up in you and goes, I gotta have horses. I gotta have them. And my philosophy, how it came upon that was just by following my heart. I had got in, you know, I, I just always loved horses, wanted to have horses love me. Yeah. And what I found when I got in, wanted to become a professional, is I found that all the, most of the professionals were actually very tough on horses right. and hard. kind of a hard, disciplined, you've got to be like this, got to be like that, and all that stuff you learned as a kid, boy, that's just see the old pipe dreams. Right, right. Well, what I did was I followed that for a while, and that didn't feel good at all to me. Yeah. And even though I was getting results, I still had a lot of horses that I wasn't getting results with. So what happened was, luckily, I, found, I, I ran into a man his name was Troy Henry, and he took me under his wing for five years until the day he died. And he started to give me some real concrete concepts, some techniques, some ideas, and, and details that, led, that, that were congruent with his philosophy. So that's where I got started, and, and since he passed away, which was about 18, 19 years ago, I've been trying to share with everybody in the world that I can what, you had learned. what I had learned. And it starts off with the philosophy. Then it's got a concept, and then it's got theory, and then it's got details, and that's that's what we try to do. We try to give people these four aspects to it. If there are a lot of people out there, and I agree, who have this, this passion for horses and awakening, do you notice a change in the last few years on how people are viewing horses and how people are training horses? Oh, absolutely. You know, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, number one, two things have happened. Horses today are used like a recreational vehicle. Okay, so it's recreation is the number one reason. And, and, and competition is to a, to a certain extent, but just true recreation is the number one thing. So that's starting to get people to go, okay, I want to have a loving relationship with my horse. It's based on love, language, and leadership. And the, and the other th factor is, today, up to 80% of all horse owners are female. Oh, really? Yes. I wasn't and aware of that. so this is now creating a you know, it's pretty hard to be uh, tough on a horse today and yeah. have 80% of the horse owners looking at you like, how dare you tweak that horse? That's right. So, so this kind of right. military male macho way of uh, dealing with the horse, showing horse who's boss and all that kind of right. stuff, that's going right out the window. And that's good for horses. Oh and man, the these horses, the horses are loving it. And you know what? Yeah. People today are, are safer with these types, I mean, Horses respond just like people do, just love to language and to leadership. Right, and, right. And, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's fantastic. Well, we appreciate your time, Mr. Pirelli. Okay. Pat, yeah. And uh, we hope to see you in the ring again this, this, in the next I'm couple gonna, of days. I'm going to be on two more times today. All right, all right. fantastic. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. The Pasifino Horse Association hosted its annual Grand National Championship show at Perry, Georgia. This six-day event provides an opportunity to showcase the beauty and versatility of this classic horse. Throughout the week, competitors bring great expectation and hopes to the show ring. Unfortunately, as with any competition, there is only one first place. Months and years of training are put to the test as Pasifino horses and their riders compete against each other in a wide variety of classes. There are classes for all ages and levels of experience. There is even a Paso costume class. The purpose of this beautiful presentation of horse and rider is to both educate and create interest in the breed by highlighting the Spanish ancestry of the Pasifino. 
The costumes are judged for both attractiveness and appropriateness. The horses are judged on brilliance of gait and carriage. Midweek, owners and breeders gather together for an annual sale. Pasafino horses perform before a packed house as the excitement of an auction unfolds. What is the question on everyone's mind as the bids come in fast and low? Is the next national grand champion on the floor and who will take them home? Do you feel the need for speed? Don't miss the Largo race. During this race, horses must remain in the Paso Largo. This is the speed form of the Paso Fino gate and requires concentration and control by both horse and rider. If a Paso breaks the Largo, they must stand and allow the other horses to go a full lap before getting back in the race. The Paso with the most laps in the allotted time wins the race. Spectators were treated to an exciting demonstration on desensitizing training. Using flares, music, and enormous beach balls is obviously very effective. The Paso Fino Horse Association's annual championship provides education, entertainment, and excitement. It is a wonderful place to experience the beauty and talent of Los Cabalos de Paso Fino, the horse with a fine step. Thank you so much for being with us today. We had a great time at the show. One thought before we leave. We live in a society where the truth grows ever more elusive. There are those who believe that there is no absolute right or absolute wrong. We believe that the truth is always absolutely right and it will set you free. As always, when you are horsing around, be safe.